On behalf of Indira Gandhi National Open University, we welcome you for this Facebook lecture session. I am Shubhashish Maji, Professor from School of Engineering and Technology from Indira Gandhi National Open University. Today's topic is change requirement. After listening to this lecture, you will be able to list the key actors involved in the change process. You will be able to describe the strategic functions performed by change agents and you will also be able to discuss various approaches to change management. Before starting this discussion, let us see that why there is a requirement for change in any organization. In order to compete in the global market, each and every organization has to think for change. And when you introduce any change in the organization, there is of course the resistance from the employees. It is a natural phenomena. Some of the employees may favor in, may act in favor of the change process. And obviously, there are some employees who will apply the resistance force. So, the favorable force, we call it driving force, and the resistance force, we call it restraining force. When the restraining force is greater than the driving force, obviously the change will not take place in the organization. Even in the equilibrium, when the restraining force is equal to the driving force, even though the change will not take place. In order to have change in the organization, the driving force has to overcome the restraining force. Today, we will discuss about the change requirements. Managing change is one of the most taxing tasks faced by organizations across the globe today. Typically, the task is highly demanding for the top management, which is responsible for initiating and facilitating the changes in the organization. Implementing a major and enduring change requires managers to develop a variety of skills in order to strike a delicate balance between individual and collective actions, paying attention to the content as well as the process of change and pursuing both short-term and long-term goals. Over the years, change experts have devised strategies to help managers address the complexities of change management issues. Despite volumes of literature on planned change, proliferation of consultants and the best efforts of corporate leaders, organizational change still appears to be a much less understood process. Since the distribution reforms have brought about many changes in the organization of distribution utilities, it is important for us to understand the change process and its requirements. You will agree that the work culture and work environment in our organization needs to be changed to meet the objectives of the reforms with the help of the same workforce. In power distribution utilities, you might have noticed that there are several changes already took place. Say for example, AMR, that is the automatic meter reading. By introducing this automatic meter reading, definitely the revenue generation has increased. And in the power distribution, there is a power generation, there is power distribution and there is power transmission. So each and every aspects we have to introduce the change process so that the overall improvement of the power utilities will be enhanced as per expectation. As a manager, 
we have a vital role in implementing the new policies. The success of the reforms would ultimately be determined by ensuring active participation of all personnel involved in the work chain. In this lecture session, you will learn about the role of the individuals involved in chain process and various models used successfully so far. A number of individuals are involved in implementing, facilitating and stabilizing the chain process in an organization and they play an important role in the process. Prominent among them are change agents, change makers and change leaders. So we shall discuss in detail about the role of change agents, change makers and the change leaders in order to implement change in the utilities. A change agent is a person who pilots the transformation of a company into an organization of eminence by providing direction during the planning phase, facilitating the implementation process, supporting those who set up the changes and mobilizing those who resist the change. As I already mentioned that the, there has to be the resistance for the changing process and it is a natural phenomena. We have to educate the employees, those who are having some dilemma, whether the change process will be detrimental for their growth. Sometimes they feel that if the change process occurs in the organizations, there, there is uncertainty for their job, but we have to arrange discussions and through a brainstorming sessions, through workshops, through seminars, so that they should aware the benefits of the change which are beneficial for the organization as well as the employees. And the modern change makers, they are leveraging the power of information and communication technologies for part imparting, for, this, uh, for delivering their views to the employees. Change agents are individuals who use their knowledge of the change process to influence decisions, thereby creating desirable change. The Effective change agent is one who is capable of orchestrating events, diagnosing the potential problem, developing a plan to deal with it, communicating to everyone and finally executing it. In effect, a change agent helps a team achieve something new. A change agent may be a manager, non-manager, a full-time organizational development professional or a leader of a division charge with the responsibility of bringing about change in his or her area. A typology of change agents has been developed based on the following four categories. A change agent could be an individual, a group or an organizational unit. His or her organizational position could be either internal or external. His or her cultural background could be indigenous or non-indigenous, governmental or private, or a combination of both. And the organization system could be an economic service, commonwealth, mutual benefit, or community system. Now let us discuss about the internal as well as the external change agents. Internal change agents may be a person who is already in a responsible port, post in that organization. He could be the change agents or we can hire some external persons who is not involved in that organization, but he is having expertise in changing process he could be an effective change agent for the 
organization. There is always a deliberation if the change agent should be internal or external. Some experts have argued that change should be introduced by external professional consultants. The reason given is that external consultants can be open-minded in making a diagnosis of problems. Now let us see what are the advantages of internal change agent and external change agent. The, when you think of internal change agent, we can think that the insider possesses the intimate knowledge of the client system that the external change agent lacks. In addition, the internal change agent does not generate the suspicion and mistrust the outsider often does. Now let us see what are the advantages if we employ some external change agent for imparting changing pro change process in the organization. See, only a skilled outsider consultant can provide the perspective, detachment and energy so necessary to effect a true alteration of existing patterns. So that is the benefit of employing an external change agent who may be expert. He might have experience in the uh, past for imparting change process in different organizations. So definitely there is an advantage if we hire an external change agent. Change makers. Change makers are the people in the organization who are actually engaged in the change implementation process. Any change program requires the participation of the entire organization in order to be successful. Every person or every employee has to be involved in the process of change in the organization so that it could be a successful venture. Employees in an organization can be divided into three broad change categories, change strategists, change implementers and change recipients. Change strategists are responsible for identifying the need for change, creating a vision of the desired outcome, deciding what change is feasible and choosing who should sponsor and defend it. Change implementers make the change happen. They manage the day-to-day -day process of change, coordinate various activities and relationships among people that give the organization its internal shape and culture. Change recipients represent the largest group of people that adopt and adapt to change. Recipients, in fact, give the desired change its ultimate shape and sustainability. It is their behavior which determines whether a change will last or not. They are also the primary source of resistance. Some of the key characteristics of change makers are given in the following table. So you see that we have categorized the change makers into three categories. Number one is change strategies. They are basically from the top level in the organization and they are basically involved for unfreezing, that is before the change occurs. So they are having visionary outlook, investigator and corporate view. Change implementers. They are basically at the middle level in the organization and the dominant stage of involvement is in the changing process. And the third category is change recipients. They are at the bottom level, employees in the organization and they are basically involved in repressing. And they will actually reinforce the change process so that 
the employees will not go back to the same status quo before the changing process. So they have to retain the system which has already been changed in the organization. If you are involved with the change process and looking for a checklist to overcome the problems, we would like to tell you that there is no one best way to implement change. We give, it, we give some suggestions in the following box. First of all, we have to analyze the organization and its need for change. Look at the company's history of changes, success and failure, pattern of resistance, analyze the forces for and against change. This analysis is known as force field analysis. As I already mentioned that when you implement any change process in any organization, there will be a favorable force. We call it driving force, those who are willing to participate in the change process. But it is a natural phenomenon that there has to be some resistance for implementing the change process. So that force is known as the restraining force. So the driving force has to be greater than the restraining force, only then the change process will be easily implemented. And for that, I have already mentioned that there has to be awareness. We may have to arrange brainstorming session. We may have to have, uh, we may have to arrange group discussion workshops and seminars so that the employees will know the benefit for implementing the changing process for the organization as well as for the employees who are working in the organization. Create a shared vision and common direction. This should reflect the core values of the company. The vision should include the rationally, the benefit, personal ramification among others. Develop a non-threatening and preferably participative implementation process. Present plans skillfully, share information and make it readily available. Explain the benefits for end users. Start small and simple. Go for weak wins and publicize successes. So in this process, we may use the information and communication technologies so that information will pass on to the employees who are actually participating in the change process. Separate from the past if needed. So if there is a failure in the past, let us forget about that situation. Let us move forward for implementing the change process. Create a sense of urgency, support a strong leader role. This is very important. The change advocate role is critical for creating a vision, motivating employees to embrace that vision and crafting a structure to reward those who strive towards the realization of the vision. Line up political sponsorship, broad based support both formal and informal is important for success. Identify target individuals and groups whose support is needed. Identify those each key player on the continuum from no commitment, may let it happen, help it to happen to make it happen. Craft an implementation plan. This plan maps out the effort. Develop enabling structure. Examples include pilot test, off-site workshops, training programs, new reward system, symbolic change like redesigned work space. This is very important that, that if some employees are, are uh, wholeheartedly participating in the change process, so definitely there has to be some reward system, those who are applying the driving force for the change. Communicate with and involve people and be honest. Every change effort may not call for full involvement. Wherever possible, there should be a meaningful dialogue that gives people to people a stake in the change. Reinforce and institutionalize change. 
it is important to reinforce the change reward those who take risk and incorporate the new behaviors change management deals with how people are being affected by an organizational change of any kind and what interventions have to be undertaken to make the change effort a success for all stakeholders the owners the employees and the customers change interventions are based on valid information about the organization's functioning provide organizational members with opportunities to make free and informed choices and gain members internal commitment to these choices in the change management literature a large number of approaches are available these approaches to change management can be classified into six categories psychology of the individual social psychological cultural innovation global change and practitioners approaches now this table depicts major change management approaches as i told you that change makers are having six categories that psychology of the individual that is obviously related to individual uh, only social psychological approaches that is linked with individual as well as the group because in a group the employees will be influenced by the views of the others in the group cultural approach that is linked with individual group and organization innovation approaches that is obviously linked with organization and environment global change that is also linked with the organization and environment but practitioner approaches linked with individual group organization and environment psychology of the individual change approaches this approach focuses on the individual but it is ironical that most consultants focus on organizational change and do not pay enough attention to the impact that the change has on the individual workers it would be desirable to intervene at the level of the individuals affected by change social psychological change approaches these are based on the concept that an individual is more shaped by his or her social environment that is in groups then by his or her genes cultural approaches this look at change from the perspective of the culture of an organization culture of an organization or group of people can be defined as a pattern of shared basic assumptions that the group learned as it solved problems of external adoption and internal integration that has worked well enough to be considered valid and therefore to be taught to new members as the correct way to perceive think and feel in relation to those problems this definition of culture identifies three levels of cultural phenomenon basic assumptions values and artifacts basic assumptions are the circumstances taken for granted in an organization as the correct way of doing things they constitute the core of culture and are the hardest to change values refer to a sense of what ought to be and they lie in the next higher level of culture artifacts are the overt behavior and other physical manifestations of culture these can usually be observed directly and are easier to change than assumptions and values among other things artifacts include procedures followed technology used and ways of communicating unfortunately changing the artifacts generally do not lead to change of culture 
to do that one has to ultimately change the values and basic assumptions innovation approaches look at change from the perspective of diffusion of new ideas or practices in this process an innovation is communicated through various channels over time among the members of a social system resistance to process innovation can be defined as late or no adoption by members of an organization global change approach looks at organizational change from a very broad standpoint these contemplate and these complete these contemplate on global transformation based on life threatening changes dictated by rapid changes taking place in an organization's environment as you all know that in the present covid 19 scenario there is a drastic change in education now online teaching is going on even in at the primary level of education and students are attending their lecture sessions sitting at home only and this is this changes takes place because of the present scenario our students cannot go to the class and attend um, their lecture sessions so we have to arrange some alternate way of the uh, education system so 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 that now it is there are several online teaching are going on practitioner approaches to change are those in which practitioners consultants and managers by and large take a diverse approach to organizational change they blend various aspects of the available theoretical approaches they are familiar with as well as add practical experiences with real change processes the on traditional approach to business reengineering requires a new leadership style for managers leading the change to quote john cotter konosuke matsushita professor of leadership at harvard university he says that success in managerial jobs increasingly requires leadership not just good management even at lower levels in firms the inability to lead is hurting both corporate performance and individual careers organizations that stifle leadership from employees are no longer winning so we have discussed about the change requirements and we have Uh, seen how we can implement change in the organization and of course when you implement any change in an organization it is a natural phenomena that there has to be some resistance if you introduce the uh, the modern method of say for example online mode of transactions so definitely the persons or the employees who are working in the organizations for a long time they will think that if we introduce the online transaction we have to learn the computer programming and all so definitely there will be a resistance from the employees but the modern change makers or the authorities or the top level uh, management they will leverage the power of information and communication technologies to impart educate edu, for to impart the communication system more effectively so that the employees will understand that if we implement the change process that will be benefit for the organization as well as for the employees at the same time the driving force are given by the like minded people who will receive the change process immediately and they will work wholeheartedly because 
they will be comfort with the change and at the same time they will be having capacity for change so they will they are the best player for for implementing the changing process so if there are some persons who are having capacity for change as well as the comfort with the change and take part in the changing process they has they have to be rewarded at the end of the change process but when the change process are already implemented it has to be reinforced that employees should be should be educated that they have to retain the change process uh, and they should not go back to the same status quo before the changing process the organization has so let us quickly summarize our discussions we have discussed the key actors involved in the change process we have discussed strategic functions performed by change agents and we have also discussed the various approaches to change management thank you very much